Good morning. Welcome to another MakeMoreNoise.org screencast. In this screencast, we're going to discuss some of the basics of automation. Automation, as the name suggests, is a way of asking logic to perform some tasks automatically over and over again, rather than you having to do them manually. Now, if you've been watching our earlier screencast, you'll be familiar with this drum session. Um, to get where we are, you can go back and watch the earlier screencasts. And we have basically strip silenced the kick drum part, added a sample to reinforce the kick, and now we're moving on to the toms. So as you can see at the moment, I've got the toms muted. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to elastic band them and click M to unmute. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see a bit more clearly what I'm doing. OK, so same sort of idea as we've done the kick tracks. We've got our hits here and then between our hits we'll just have bleed. So let's have a quick listen to that so you can see what I mean. So elastic band them again and hit S for solo. So between the tom roll we've got right at the beginning here and the little build we have in the middle there, you've basically got nothing on those tracks apart from bleed from the microphones. Now, philosophically, you might decide that you want to keep that bleed because it's an integral part of the way the kit sounds and if you've recorded it well in a nice room, I have to say I'd probably agree with your decision. But uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to assume that you don't want the bleed between the tracks, i.e. it's not very well recorded or it's not a fabulous sounding room or you're going for a hyper-modern, almost unreal drum sound rather than it being a cohesive whole instrument. You're tooting each microphone like it's its own entity. So as you can see, when we click the automation button up here, we brought up the automation parameters. Now at the moment they're set to off and they're set to mute. So the first thing we're going to do is click where it says mute and hold and it brings up a list and you can see what options are available to us. So at the moment we have the option to automate the volume, the pan, the solo or the mute. So we're going to select volume for each of these tracks. Now if you notice here it still says off in each of these parameters and I'll come back to why that is in a second. So what we want to do is automate these tracks so that we have the tom hits nice and loud and the background hit uh, background microphone bleed in between them reasonably quiet. So what I've done is I've clicked four times around the actual hit to create what logic calls nodes and now I can actually just grab the line and pull it down. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the volume down around the hits so that I've got the hits nice and loud and the bleed nice and quiet. Same idea on the next track down. Now what's brilliant about doing automation this way rather than writing it in with the fader is you have absolutely complete control over it. It's not the most musical or the most quick way of doing it, but it does able you, enable you to go back and really fine tune. So if I now use the zoom tool and zoom right in, you'll be able to see where I've been quite quick and messy. We've got our automation points are actually quite a long way away from where the hits actually happen. So what we can do now is grab each of these nodes and we can drag them to the left or the right or we can drag them up and down in terms of volume. And that way we can fine tune the automation so that literally all we're getting coming through nice and loud is the drum hits. So the closer the two nodes are together, the quicker the fade time will be. So that's fading up very quickly there because it's almost a straight line. If I move that to the left, it'll fade up more slowly, sound more natural. As we've got the overheads in this track anyway, you won't really notice the difference in the fades, so I'm going to make them nice and quick, so we're really only focusing on the actual portion of the audio we want. And where the tom rings out here, I'm actually going to make the fade a little bit slower because I don't want to destroy the ring out on it. Same idea on the track below. Drag the node inwards. Make it quite a quick rise time. And again, a little bit slower on the fade out because I want to maintain the actual ring off of the tom. Now, just use the microphone uh, microphone tool, use the zoom tool and click on the background to get back to our normal size. And I'm just going to very quickly do the other two bits we talked about. So we've got the tom roll in the middle of the song, four nodes to either side, drag the volume down by grabbing on the line, make it nice and quiet. And then the final one here. Now, because we've got our volume line already set quite low. I'm going to do it slightly the opposite way around here. So I'm going to grab the line in the middle and drag that up and dragging it up to 0 dB, which is where I had it set to originally. And just very quickly move those nodes in so it's a bit tighter. Now, obviously, if I was doing this for real, I'd be spending a little bit more time on this than I am for the purposes of this demo. But that gives you a rough idea what I would normally do. So now let's just have a listen to it like that. 
So as you can hear, we've got our tom hits nice and loud, but we've got our microphone bleed nice and quiet. Again, I'm just going to taper that fade on a little bit because that last tom hit's not particularly wonderful sounding. Just push that up so it's the same level as the bit after it. Um, and you can actually see the level in dBs is shown here. So we've got that minus 20.2. It's actually minus 20.9 the other side. But for the purposes of what we're doing, that's not a big deal. So I'm just going to take it out of solo so you can hear the whole thing in context. And you'll hear what I mean about the speed of the fades not really making a lot of difference. You're not going to perceive the fact that we faded that tom mic up and down. Okay, now that's fine. That's how you write volume automation. And it's also how you adjust the volume automation. But let's say you've decided you don't want to automate the track at all. How do you get rid of it? And click in the track header, go to options, and then you've got a whole list here of track automation. So you create four nodes at region border, create two nodes at region border, create four nodes at region border is basically what we were doing manually, but you can assign a key command to that. What we're actually going to do here is delete currently visible automation data of current track. And again, you can see the key command for it here on the right hand side. On to Tom 2, same idea, track automation, delete currently visible automation data. And finally, on track 3. OK, so we're back where we started, except we've now got our faders set at minus 20 something. So I'm just going to reset all of those to zero. And we're going to use the same idea again, but we're actually going to do it with mutes this time rather than doing it with track uh, with volume automation so if we go back to our header here you can see volume main mute volume main mute Just click and hold the volume to bring up the list go through it select mutes now again we end up in the same state as we did earlier you've actually got the automation here but it's grayed out because you're not using it the big difference being that where these said off earlier which show the mode the status mode of the automation they say read at the moment which means they're going to respond to any automation that's on the track you've also got off touch latch and write i think we'll come back to what they are in another tutorial as well because you can get quite deep into this so we'll leave those set to read at the moment and as you can see with mute automation, it's either on or off, which obviously is completely logical. Whereas with volume automation, we can taper. So again, same idea. Just round the actual particular pieces of audio we want to highlight. We just click and draw our nodes in, and then we can drag those around the screen. And again, same idea. If you drag here on this very first node, drag it all the way down, that track is now muted. And then we can just simply click and click. And the same on that final tom hit because it's muted. It's right down the bottom. Click and click. So just solo those three tracks so you can hear what I mean. I'm doing that by shift clicking and then pressing S. OK, now I've made a mistake there. So what I can do is, as we discussed earlier, is I can grab on the node, drag that to the right. So let's have another listen to that. Let's take it out of solo, have another listen in context. Okay, now one final time we'll just talk about these mode buttons again. So if I now switch these to off, we'll just put these three tracks back in solo again. Even though you can see the automation on the screen, it's not going to respond to it because you've told each channel that you don't want it to follow the automation. So now let's just switch those back into read again. Again, we'll just shift click to highlight all three.
And that's a very basic introduction to automation. There's a lot more concepts that I want to discuss in future tutorials, but that'll get you going for now. Thank you for watching.